Welcome back everyone to Mighty Ride Junkies. Either you have been patiently waiting for this second segment of the Universal Studios Hollywood Halloween Horror Nights, or you just noticed these videos and started watching them. Either way, just a heads up, if you didn't notice from the title, this is part two. If you want to see part one, it's on my channel, just click the link, it's the closest video to this one. Uh, if you are new to this channel, and you enjoy the content here or any other uh, future content that I will be putting up, please subscribe. If you like this video, please like it and please get the word out about this video and the, how much you liked it. So from where we left off, Universal Studios Hollywood had attempted to make Halloween Horror Nights as successful as their Orlando sister park, but they weren't succeeding. After multiple failed attempts and breaks from the event, the studio turned to a man who would change the game for Halloween mazes. In 2004, four years after the last Halloween event in Hollywood, the studio started planning to bring back Halloween Horror Nights. Universal eventually would find their horror mastermind in the likes of John Murdy, an absolute freaking genius. He revolutionized maze design. He would take areas of a maze that you would think you were safe with no corners or turns for scare talent to hide or creep on you, and he would figure out a way to scare you, whether it was something popping up directly in front of you or a trap door where the scare talent lay in wake. He would also take scenes from some of your favorite horror films that was thought impossible to put in a real life maze, and he would do it. Murdy was not new to Universal Studios by any means. He helped design and greatly influenced the ride Revenge of the Mummy that still sits in the park. And speaking of the mummy, the Mummy Returns maze, the first maze I mentioned that was a permanent maze from the last video, uh, closed in 2004 and reopened as Van Helsing's Dracula Fortress. By 2006, Universal Studios Hollywood was finally ready to bring back Halloween Horror Nights with its first new maze in the lineup, Asylum. I wonder if that's ever been done before. Van Helsing's Dracula Fortress was redone for the season as Universal's House of Horror, which would let you come up close and personal with some of Universal's most frightening creations. But the highlight of the year was the return of the Terra Tram, labeled Terra Tram Director's Cut. The story focused on a famous director from Slovakia named Pavel Pernevsky, who Universal hired in June 2006 to make horror films. However, Universal quickly learned Pernesky was using real people for his torture films, and Universal quickly terminated his contract. They sent security and local authorities to evict him from the property and have him arrested, but Pernesky was never located, and suddenly sightings of him started appearing randomly throughout the back lot as he was filming those who spotted him. Riders on the tram are then told he was looking for actors for his final cut. Suddenly, the tram would come to a stop and riders would find themselves abandoned on the backlot sets for the first time in Universal Studios Hollywood history. And the layout hasn't changed since. But the advertisement of the director was enough to draw on the crowd Universal had been looking for. And in response, Universal changed Van Helsing's Dracula Fortress to Universal House of Horror permanently in March the following year. This also was the first year that Jurassic Park The Ride got somewhat of a retheme in Jurassic Park In The Dark. Basically, all the lights are off, and when you get to the final lift, you'll hear Guns N' Roses, Welcome to the Jungle, while strobe lights expose other raptors having a meal, or looking for one. 2007 was a breakout year for Hollywood's Halloween Horror Nights. Using the tagline, Horror Comes Home, Universal Studios Hollywood brought longtime horror icons Jason Voorhees, Leatherface, and Freddy Krueger to their mazes. This year also brought Universal Studios Orlando's highly popular Jack the Clown character to the park. Starting with the Terra Tram Horror Comes Home, guests would learn the story of Jack the Clown and how he killed his victims based on his obsessions with horror films. Guests would then be dropped off in the usual spot for the Terra Tram and go against his minions. While the set design was tweaked every year, the path is the same. This year was a standout though because the clowns in the maze looked like actual clowns with neon paint and clothing unlike the usual look nowadays of the faded paint masks and ragged clothing. The following year, the design of the creepy clowns changed to this because of certain movies out there sort of redefined the creepy clown look, and it kind of stuck. 
Hopefully, with the 2017 remake of It, we may see the Neon Clowns return, as I've always found them a bit more creepy and cool to look at. Moving on to Friday the 13th, Camp Blood, which if you are a fan of the films, you know this is a nickname for Camp Crystal Lake, where the majority of the movies take place. The Friday the 13th original movies ran from 1980 with the first, where Jason wasn't even the main horror villain of the film, to Freddy vs. Jason in 2003. Guests would find themselves within the grounds of Camp Crystal Lake where Jason begins to stalk them. The next maze for the year was A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy's Nightmare, based on the original Wes Craven Nightmare on Elm Street movies that ran from 1984 to 2003, which also concluded with Freddy vs. Jason. Guests were taken into Weston Hills Asylum, where some of the movies took place and where Freddy himself was... conceived. In the story of this maze, Freddy had controlled the insane to come after you. So basically, your typical insane asylum maze, except Freddy Krueger was in it. Okay? Universal's House of Horror, which was the year-long maze I mentioned earlier, was of course open. And now we move on to what probably broke Universal's gates. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Back in Business Maze which combined elements from the original films and the remake. This maze was almost perfectly designed. In many rooms, it was almost going for a psychological scare. There were some rooms where the actors were there just playing their characters and not trying to scare you. This would leave any normal person to believe the scare would be in the next room. However, once you got there, there was no one there. With your heart pounding now, your mind immediately focuses on the next room ahead, knowing there has to be something. Except, a trap door from behind you would open and Leatherface would rev his chainsaw or slam his sludge hammer right behind you, causing a really good scare effect. One of my all-time favorite rooms came from this maze. You would enter a room that was just a bunch of blood-stained sheets being hung up to dry. Above you, the blood of animal carcasses was dripping down onto you and the room was somewhat of an actual maze. The sheets were so close to one another that you had to push them out of the way to see where you were going. And if you got too lost, like the majority of people did, you'd hear a chainsaw go off. But before you could pinpoint its direction of origin, Leatherface would come down on you and your friends. I had not one but two people in my party collapsing to their backs on the ground because of their shock and fear. The maze won multiple Best Maze of the Year awards and awards for Halloween attractions. It also was ranked the number one maze of 2007 in the United States. The year was a massive success for the park, getting record numbers it hadn't seen before. Trying to continue with its stride in 2008, the event didn't seem much of a difference. The park had kept its famous Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Friday the 13th Camp Blood Maze, only making very minor adjustments to them. The park also scrapped Jack the Clown and never brought him back, but instead let Freddy Krueger become the new event host. New that year was the Terra Tram, which was called Terra Tram The Nightmare Tour. While the layout stayed the same, because it probably always will, you were led to believe Freddy had trapped you in your worst nightmares and would be setting them loose onto you. Also, Freddy's own maze was changed drastically from last year. While one part of the asylum was kept in, guests would now go through many different parts of Freddy's story, including his home on Elm Street, parts of the local high school, and the infamous Boiler Room, a major upgrade from the previous year. Also that year, Universal House of Horror got its first addition to its maze with Meet the Strangers, based on the film The Strangers, which was released earlier that year. Nothing too crazy decoration-wise, but scare talent was added that wore the costumes of the mass killers in the film. 2009 saw completely new mazes and horror icons come to Halloween Horror Nights. Under the tagline, It's Showtime, Michael Myers finally got his first maze with Halloween, The Life and Crimes of Michael Myers. Guests would be taken into Myers' house where they would relive the story of Michael Myers from the first Halloween film of 1978, all while listening to probably one of the most creepiest soundtracks made for a horror film. 
the remake of My Bloody Valentine, which was released earlier that year, didn't really see the success they were hoping for box office wise. But the majority of the success came from the return of the 3D horror film, which made enough noise for the film to get its own maze. My Bloody Valentine, Be Mine Forever, let guests walk through some replica set pieces from the film while being hunted by Harry Warden. The final new maze was Saw Game Over, based on one of my favorite New Age horror films. Saw Game Over took guests right into Jigsaw's game as they witnessed iconic scenes from films reenacted before their eyes. But be careful, because Jigsaw's minions would also be about, pig mask and all, looking for you to play the newest game. The final addition to Universal Halloween Horror Nights 2009 was the redecoration of House of Horror, which was turned into Chucky's Funhouse. Nothing really changed too dramatically with the permanent maze, but the theme added a full interactive Chucky near the entrance of the maze to make fun and laugh at the people in line. This was the same stage and Chucky puppet that was used for Chucky's Insult Emporium, which had been around since 1992 and had got a name change in 1999. 2008 was the last time the street show was seen, and after this year's Halloween Horror Nights, the Chucky Puppet and stage haven't been seen since. If you attended the 2009 Halloween Horror Nights event in Hollywood, you might have also got the one-hit wonder show that took up the Terminator venue, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The show basically was a live performance of some of the most popular songs from the musical, and it truly is a shame this only lasted one year. I mean, I would understand if it no longer existed today, but the show was something that should have lasted longer than one season. And of course, how can I forget, we have the Terra Tram, which was titled Live or Die. The tram experience completely based off the Saw films. The Terra Tram was your own test, but with the exception to the intro video, there really isn't anything else related to the films. You'll go through the usual layout of the backlot maze. 2010, Universal chose to scrap the original 80s slasher icons and focus on the remakes. The Nightmare on Elm Street remake of 2010 and the Friday the 13th of 2009 didn't sit well with most hardcore fans. I mean, I liked them, but I'm not everyone. Unfortunately, the movies were hated enough to scrap the ideas for sequels, even though they exceeded the money that they were supposed to make. But one of the main reasons the park went through these two mazes was because they were in the middle of construction for Transformers The Ride. You may be wondering what this has to do with anything, but director and producer of the Transformers franchise, Michael Bay, was heavily involved in laying out the story and blueprints of the Transformers ride. He was consistently involved in some way with the production of the ride. Bay also was the number one producer for the remakes of Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. So I'll let you figure that one out. But starting with a Nightmare on Elm Street remake, the title maze Never Sleep Again took guests through the neighborhood he hunted before ending up in the infamous boiler room. Friday the 13th had one of the most original names ever with Kill Jason Kill. That's sarcasm if you couldn't sense it. Guests were once again transported to Camp Crystal Lake, where they had to survive the onslaught that was Jason Voorhees. You know, if people just stayed away from Camp Blood, it wouldn't be called Camp Blood. I mean, it's not like he can leave... oh shit. However, even with the remakes making their home this year, Chucky did return with Chucky's Revenge, which was the Terra Tram. This was actually a pretty clever storyline. Chucky was actually a normal actor, other than the fact that he was a doll, and was basking in the fame of the Child's Play movies. But the fame of being the famous killer doll started to take a toll on him, and he snapped, and actually became the killer doll he betrayed in the films. Universal even blamed him for the real-life fire that took place in 2008 that left sets of some iconic movies destroyed. I've always saw the Child's Play movies as a dark comedy rather than a horror film, so this was the year the Terra Tram really stood out to me. Saw returned, changing their name from Game Over to Game On. The last thing guests had seen in the maze Game Over were the events that led to John Kramer, aka Jigsaw's death. 
Game On focused on his minions continuing his work, but really it was to show the other devices used in the future installments. House of Horror got a unique theme this year as Vampire Castle of the Undead. Nothing really changed in the maze except for the final bit of the maze. Instead of being scared in Dracula's castle, you found yourself in a rave-like party with all of Dracula's close associates. The final maze of the year almost didn't happen. Up until this year, Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood only had three brand new mazes and the permanent maze being rethemed. But this year, a fourth maze was put into the lineup, Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. The studio was looking to mend relationships with Rob Zombie after the issue that left House of a Thousand Corpses shelved for some time. Zombie wanted nothing more than to return to the maze world. When Zombie and Universal had agreed to a two-year agreement, Universal started immediately on the construction of a House of a Thousand Corpses, which Zombie originally had wanted back in 2000. While the agreement was made in plenty of time, the rights to the film were now with Liongate, and didn't exactly arrive to Universal's property in a timely manner. Most mazes begin construction in July, and sometimes even June, depending on the complexity of the maze. Construction for House of a Thousand Corpses didn't begin until a much, much later date. It was so doubtful that the maze would be able to be a part of this year's lineup, the studio didn't even include it on the shirts for that year's Halloween Horror Nights. However, when it was realized the maze would be done in time, separate shirts arrived in the gift shop promoting House of a Thousand Corpses. Needless to say, Universal wanted to make things right with Zombie, and automatically included House of a Thousand Corpses in the 2011 lineup, with some upgrades. This year, the park had a grand total of six mazes and was using the tagline, What Fear Fears Most. Rob Zombie no longer was the only metal god coming to Halloween Horror Nights. Alice Cooper joined up with Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare based on his hit song of the same name. Cooper was ecstatic to be part of something he had fantasies about since he started his career. The maze was designed to get a front row seat of Cooper's biggest fears and most popular fears in the population, going into a giant room full of snakes or spiders, etc. Cooper loved his experience so much that he even dressed up as a scare talent and would actually scare guests walking through his maze with them having no idea who he actually was. And to make sure that the tension was completely off of him, another scare actor would be dressed up as Alice Cooper within the same room. 2011 also brought some old franchises into the mix. The Thing, a simulation based off the film The Thing, which was a prequel to The Thing, guests would travel through the research site from the film after the outbreak and get to experience the site in full chaos. The long-awaited massive letdown Wolfman remake of 2010 got to retheme House of Horror with Wolfman, Curse of Tabit Hall. Noticing the difference between the retheme and the regular year-long maze was like trying to see a solar flare on the sun with the naked eye. Upcoming horror director Eli Roth got to bring one of his earlier creations into a maze with Hostile Hunting Season. You would get a front row seat into the Elite Hunting Club as you tore their various torture devices before seeing them up close and in use all while you try to avoid being captured to be their next body. For this maze, let's take a pause to talk about some geographical things. If you aren't familiar with Hollywood, it's a neighborhood located within Los Angeles. Los Angeles has a profuse amount of Hispanic influence and culture due to its population being 50% Hispanic or Latino. This is including Mexican folklore, which has some of the most terrifying stories for children. One of these stories is La Llorona, or The Weeping Woman. La Llorona, Path of the Lost Souls, was introduced at this year's Halloween Horror Night. If you're watching this from outside of North America or never heard of the story, basically, a poor but beautiful woman falls in love with a rich, high-class man. They get married and have two children. The husband gets bored with his wife and ends up having an affair that his wife sees while walking down the river with her children. After the husband ignores her but acknowledges his kids, the wife mentally breaks down and drowns her two children. After she comes to terms to what she did, she can't live with herself and drowns herself in the same river. 
The folklore goes on to claim the weeping woman now walks the river at night, looking for her children. This was a story used to keep kids from going out at night by claiming La Llorona would get them. The maze takes you through a small village before taking you deep into that night to have encounters with angry spirits. Lastly, for 2011, was the theme for the Terra Tram with Scream for Your Life, which of course was promoting Scream 4, which had been released earlier that year. At this point, Universal Studios' Hollywood Halloween Horror Nights had become a powerhouse for Halloween events. It was suddenly in every travel guide's top 10 things to do during Halloween. Of course, it only got bigger from here. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, we will leave it here. When I return for the third installment of this series, we will get to look at what I consider to be my favorite year. So until then, take care and be safe.